So we didn't have much tennis this week on the ATP or the WTA. We had Davis Cup for the ADB, which doesn't give out any ranking points. So not too many changes to the rankings this week, but let's go have a look at actually what happened last week because there were changes for players outside the top 10. I'll start with the WTA. There was two events last week. One of those was Guadalajara, where Frey took out Gadetsky in the final 7-6-6-4 to lift the biggest trophy of her career. And over in Tunisia, we had the qualifier Cartel taking out Shrimkova 6-3-7-5. So like I said, no major names playing and there was no major change Changes to the top of the rankings, but huge changes for those players there who just gained a lot of points, and we'll talk about that in a second. Over on the men's side of things, we had Davis Cup. Like I said, nothing to do with the rankings or anything like that. Rankings don't count for Davis Cup, or you don't get any points for that. But these are the teams that qualified for the final at the end of the year. We have Italy, Spain, USA, and Canada all winning every match they played in their Davis Cup groups. And the runners-up for each group, which also qualified for the end-of-the-year finals for the Davis Cup, were Netherlands, Australia, Germany, and Argentina. So... Those eight teams will be competing for the Davis Cup in November. And I've got to be honest, it wasn't really that close compared to other Davis Cups. We had pretty much all the teams set by the end of day three or four. So a little bit disappointed that Davis Cup wasn't as exciting, but those are the winners and they're going to be playing for the Davis Cup at the end of the year. All right, let's talk about the players outside the top 10 that have gone up the rankings this week. Starting with Fresh, She goes up to 32 in the world, which is a career high for her. 11 spots higher than last week after winning in Guadalajara and earning 500 points to her total. Kadetsky, she goes up 64 four spots to 88 in the world, which is also a career high for her after making the final of Guadalajara as a qualifier. And Cartel goes into the top 100 for the first time, 55 spots higher than last week, up to number 96, which is also a career high for her. So three players there that did really well last week getting to career high rankings. The players have dropped down the rankings over the last week. Sarban Kruger, who went down 18 spots to number 69 in the world after losing points from last year's tournaments post-US Open. Sophia Kennan, she also dropped 36 spots after losing a lot of points from this time last year. And Arani also dropping down 15 spots Spots number 91 in the world after losing a bunch of points from this time last year. So some players there that couldn't replicate the points from 12 months ago, dropping down the rankings. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings. We had a couple of changes, but nothing up the top with Sviontek still at number one and Sabalenka at number two. Pagula at three and Rabakin at four. Palini five and Goff at six with Jung at number seven and Navarro at eight. But Krajikova, she dropped down two spots outside the top 10 after losing points from last year's tournament she won in San Diego, making way for Zachary, who goes up one spot to number nine and Collins back into the top 10 after a couple of weeks out. So no major changes, like I said. Not many of these players playing, but we do have a lot of these players playing in a couple of weeks' time to start the Asian swing. So expect some changes then. Over to the race, the finals, and no changes, and no new players have qualified, which Fiontek's still at one, and Sabalenka at two, Rabakina at three, and Paulini at four. Pagula comes in at five with Goff at six, Navarro at seven, and Collins at eight, Zhang at number nine, and Krajikova still in the number 10 spot. And of course, Krajikova is qualified because she won Wimbledon. So if she stays in the top 20 for the rankings for the next couple of months, Months, she will qualify even if she's not in the top eight. So there is only five spots left if Krajikova stays in that top 20. So it's getting really interesting, especially because there's not that many points left up for grabs over the next couple of months. Over on the men's side of things, and again, no changes because we just had Davis Cup, so no points exchanged. Sinner stays at one with Zverev at two, Elkris at three, and Djokovic at four. Medvedev comes at number five with Rublev at six, Fritz at seven, Hercatch at eight, Rude at number nine, and Dimitrov rounds at the top 10 for this week. But as I said, a lot of these players are playing in a couple weeks' time when we go back to Beijing and we go to Tokyo and we also have Shanghai, the big one of the Asian swing, so expect some changes then, especially because players like Sinner and Djokovic, Medvedev and Elkrez all did really well to end the season last year. Over to the race, the finals now, and no more players have qualified as of yet, but Medvedev's not too far there. We haven't got any changes either, with Sinner, Zverev and Elkrez still in the top three and all qualify for the ADB finals. Medvedev at four, Fritz at five, with Rude at number six, Rublev at seven, and Diminor at eight, Djokovic at nine, and Dimitrov at number ten. But as I said, Medvedev not too far away from qualifying. If he wins in Shanghai, for example, that should be enough to get him qualified. Uh, of course, Djokovic, the big one not being qualified or not even in the top eight at this stage of the year is kind of crazy. He said that he's not bothered by the ATP finals and he's not really focusing on that. But I mean, an ATP finals without Djokovic seems so, so weird because he has won that tournament so many times and he's been there pretty much every year of his career over the last couple of decades. There it is. No major changes because not many players played on the ATP. Actually, no points were exchanged on the ATP and on the WTA. It was just a couple of smaller tournaments. Next week, it's probably going to be the same thing because we don't have many big names playing next week and 
and there shouldn't be too many points changing hands. We've got the Labor Cup next weekend, which again doesn't allow any points, so it's gonna be weird having the uh, the rankings kind of stagnate for the next couple of weeks. But then we get serious again with the Asian swing, and then of course the indoor tournaments for the men and the WTA finals for the ladies, where things get really really serious. So let me know down in the comments below what's been the strangest part of the rankings this year, considering we don't have many changes this week. I still think Djokovic not being in the finals race, not being in that top eight, is crazy, and the fact that he doesn't really care about it is even crazier. That he's said you know in the last couple of days that he's not bothered by A to B finals anymore, and he doesn't care about qualifying or ranking, which is weird because I mean yeah okay he hasn't won anything, but man it's it's so weird to think he doesn't want to be in that top eight of the best players in the world. You know he's he is one of the best players. He is the best player of all time. It's weird not to think he would be motiv motivated to prove that he still is up the top of the game and still competitive with those top guys. But they have the rankings this week. No major changes, but we'll start getting some changes over the next few weeks.